Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer and Cardboard Stacker Top 5 video. Today's top 5 is going to be... Games that we used to like. How much we used to like those games. Yes. We do a uh, top five, from five, four, three, two, one, being one is the one we like the most and now like the least, like the biggest gap between them. I think them. the biggest fall. The biggest fall from yeah, or Yeah, or at least maybe the most surprising fall, I would say. Or, you know, you never, you never know. Right now is the time we're going to write in the comment section which games, your top five list of games that you have fallen from grace. And we'll see how closely we match up. I think mm -hmm. him and I are going to be probably different. Yeah. Quite a bit, I would imagine, just based on the games we have in our collection. But I think we'll have similar agreeances on certain games as well, I would yeah. say. We'll see, though. Top five games, Fallen from Grace, yeah. from our favorites to our but, well, somewhere else. I mean, before we move on, I mean, what what do you think, why, why some of these games have fallen from Grace? I think a lot has to do with time, and then a lot has to do with games that do what these games did and now do them better. Mm-hmm. And then maybe, like, time affects a lot of it, like, like artwork, quality, mm -hmm. like, now you have better games with, like, different types of uh, game tray components and better quality plastics, and all that probably plays a role in it. But I think mainly just the amount of time you've put in and energy you play something, eventually when you're, you stop playing and you move on, it's like an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> you're, you're just, you're, okay, we're not, we're, you know, we're okay, but we're, we're done now. Yeah, I mean, some of the games, like, you know, are... Because there's so many games coming out now. Yeah, and it's getting crazy. And, you, and I, you know, I'm know, i one of those people that just like to try the new things, and then those things just get just pushed down and pushed down and going from there. Or you can even just have a bad experience with something. That's true. Yeah. Let's go ahead and begin. And, oh, no, we're supposed to have these little... Dice. I do have... I right? do, here's you, one. I have dice. Which you have dice. Right okay, here. we're perfect. We're still good. We're still golden. Luckily, I have yeah. all the things we need right here. I, I don't think we have done one of these videos in quite a it's while. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. Oh, oh no, no. My, all my, uh, my Choose Your Own Adventure Kids books. Okay, okay they'll just stand to the side. You, you got one, and you get the other. All right. Okay. You ready? Uh-huh. Yeah. Two, six. six. All right. No, how we do it is the person who gets the, who beats the roll is the one who gets to choose whether they go first or second. No, I'll go ahead and go first. Okay, fine. All right. Yep. I think like, this next game is something is a game that I still like, but you know, I used to like it a lot more. But for I I think for this one, is something that I don't think they produce much of it, and it's kind of laid stagnant for quite a while, and that's why I haven't played anything else because other games like this actually kept keep releasing and making it more fresh okay so this one is the second edition of yomi, yomi. yeah so this is a like a two uh, one v fighter fighting card game think street fighter if it were a oh. battle card game yeah it's a it's, it's a card game did a, a game that killed us was that the exceed well the, well the thing is i had both battlecon battlecon was still number one i got this i also liked it a lot it wasn't probably not top 10 still, but I liked it a lot. Mm. Then then there's Exceed, which actually kind of flows with the same thing. And I think Exceed is actually much a, kind of cooler style because they have different IPs meeting with different IPs in that, uh, in, in different series. This is just one series, the Yomi series in there. And, and, and I think it's cool and it does feel like uh, more of the kind of combo mashing kind of style while Battlecons is more highly strategic. This is a lot more tactical nice. in there. But unfortunately, I think we just came, because we started with Battlecon first, we kind of like this one kind of fizzled down and then exceed and exceed borrowed a lot from Battlecon as well. So, you know, this actually just make it fizzled out. And now I don't really play it much anymore, even though I, I still like it. I still think a, a lot about it more. And, uh, but we just never get to play it. Anymore. If somebody asked you to play it, would you still jump in and be okay? Let's play. It's, I would say, oh, I almost would say yes, because I haven't played in a long time. Also rules kind of matter too, because you know, when you don't play something for a long time, you, your rules, have you played this head, online? Yeah. There's an yes, I know there's an online one, but you know now there's Battlecon online too, so it's like oh everything's Battlecon for me now. I yeah. see. So Yomi would be number five. Yeah, it is a good game. I would recommend it if someone is trying to find something like a one v one card finding game. This is it's it is very good, and it's developed by someone who uh, I believe tournaments as uh, with Tree Spider uh, David Serlin. So yeah, nice. 
And I guess I'll go ahead and do my number five. And you have to excuse us, we're sweating in here because this is like the unfiltered cardboard sauna. So if you notice that sweat's dripping, yeah, we're big guys, but it's also a closed up room so that you guys don't in get any In the middle of July. Yeah, it is hot. It is hot here in California and it is hot. But uh, just so you know, as we wipe our brows and, and all of that, we're just, we're, 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 we're not only are we hot, but we're also hot. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> please forgive us. I'm gonna go ahead and pick See, I have two, and they're really close. And I'm going to go ahead and go with this one here, I think. So this is King of New York, uh, made by Ello. Mm -hmm. And I would also say this categorizes with King of Tokyo as well. Uh, this is a game in which you'll be rolling die. You'll be battling against each other. You'll be trying to gather new powers. You're trying to uh, utilize the die in a Yahtzee-style mode of gameplay in which you roll die, choose the ones you want to keep, roll the die that you don't want to keep, do that up to three times, select the die that you have, whatever you've got left over is what you keep, and then you're going to select to buy certain things. You're going to go ahead and attack with certain die, save up certain die for health and power-ups and all that good stuff. Uh, King of New York is probably the more advanced game, the gamer version of it, I would yeah. say. Mm -hmm. And King of Tokyo is the more family-oriented, quicker, easier-to-understand game. I think of the two I'd prefer to play, King of Tokyo, uh, just because if I'm going to play a more uh, heavier-style gutsy game, I've got other ones uh, that are more, more in my opinion, better. But as far as King of New York goes, or King of Tokyo goes, I should say, that one's probably still... The King Yahtzee family style game as far as how easy it is to play and how quick it's a gateway game that gets people on the table. But I used to love King of New York, King of Tokyo, those games where I play all the time. We played this nonstop for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And then even still when people would ask me to play, I'd be like, yeah, let's let's go ahead and take out King of New York. We'll play it. I'll show you guys how a Yahtzee style battle and card game works. And so we pop it out. Uh, nowadays... Uh, the game has been collecting dust. Uh, I haven't touched it in probably over a year. Mm -hmm. And it's just sitting there. And all the games in my list are games that are literally on my collection shelves. Games that I still keep because I know that they're fun games and eventually people might want to play them that aren't me because I have people to come over and play games. And when that happens, I'll be like, this is a great choice for you guys. I'm not going to play it because I'm just i I'm, I'm just done. I, I've, I've, I've been done. Um... I mean, really, it would take a bit to get me to want to jump back into King of New York. King of Tokyo, I might I might jump in and play, maybe, if it's the big version of the con or something. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no more King of New York or King of Tokyo for me, pretty much, even though I still think they're really good games. Yeah, this is one I also would consider... I, I, I wouldn't say I, I would actually put it on the list, but it has something that I used to like. We, we used to play a lot before. When was the last time you played it? I see. Maybe last year. Maybe last year. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So, okay. there you go. King of New York, King of Tokyo. Here we go. I guess so. Six! Ah. Oh. I'm going next. I'm gonna go twice in a row. All right. Uh, let's see here. The next game was actually a pretty easy one, considering I chose that one as my fifth. This is called Machi Koro, and I really, really dug Machi Koro. When it came out. When it came out. Uh, Bright Lights, Big City, Millionaire's Row, I've got the expansions. Uh, I've got the, literally the broken token organizer wow. for the game. I have a lot of Machi Koro, and I really enjoyed this game, because you're rolling die, it's got the dice drafting, you're choosing things, you're building a city. And I really enjoyed that. I mean, there's some people who are, like, are either completely opposed to it or completely for it. It's, it's usually in those two different camps. But for me, I've always liked Machi Koro, but I've noticed that I don't touch it anymore. And this one specifically because there's Space Base. And I just really, really enjoy Space Base as opposed to any of the Machi Koros which, out there. Which is funny, because I remember, uh, uh, D David, right? Uh, John DeClaire? Oh, John, I mean, John, yeah. John, John, yeah. I remember he was in your show yep. a couple, couple he came, weeks back. He, I mean, that might be and some as to why And, he, too, and he did say that uh, the game is inspired. It is, it is. It is very much, yeah. uh, very similar to Machi Koro. If you like Machi Koro, you'll like Space Space. But if you like Space Space, that doesn't mean you like Machi Koro. Because yeah. Machi Koro just has a lot less going for it. I'd say it's a lot easier to play, a lot quicker. It's a better gateway game. But that one just has so much more room for growth and expansion and unique aspects to it. There's only two expansions to that game, which play quite differently than when I attach these. This is actually a standalone, and this is an expansion. Uh, but it's just a better overall game that provides the same amount of enjoyment and style of enjoyment as well. So Machi Koro has seen very little play in the last year and a half, mm -hmm. I would say. I think I pulled it out maybe once to show my cousin who's very young and wanted to roll some dice. So, Machi Koro and all of the things because now there is space space. 
But I can see why people still like Machi Koro. Mm -hmm. They don't know about Space Base yet. Okay. Well, here's my next one, and yep. that is a pandemic. That would be in my <laughs> my my list of Your really, list, yeah, my yeah. very short list. Yeah, I have like two or three of my short so lists. I, as you can see, it is one of the first editions in there uh, that a uh, pandemic has to have. Now I think it's like there's a tenth edition one, and also the the new rebrand kind of like it looks really cool, kind of like cool art. I have now. one as well. So I have the newer version. Like, I think this is probably one of my in like the very first year of me gaming getting this so this is this has been in my collection for a long time i think i'm gonna get rid of it anyway i, I wouldn't look for the new one if it's like a good price but this is something i don't need to play anymore since um i don't really care there's for a lot of games yeah. just like it as well as the fact that most people probably played the heck out of this if you're if you're not a new gamer in the industry the pandemic is probably one of the first you picked up yeah well this is this is still a bestseller too and oh, yeah and i would always recommend it anyway because it is the cooperative game but i have fallen from cooperative games, so I don't really care about them anymore. And is this Matt Leacock? Is that, is uh, that is, am, I, am I wrong here? Ma yeah. Okay. Yep. And he actually, I think, all, I think it was about almost to win the this one of the Spillage Jars too. But um, yeah, but I still like it. I would recommend it, but I don't really care to play it anymore. Even with the expansion, this has the Outbreak expansion, the original one too, and I think it's kind of cool. But it's like. Uh, I don't need to play this because I know I'm gonna enjoy some other games better. Yeah, I mean, there's the the one from uh, Magic Meeple Games that mm -hmm. I really like. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of it now. Maybe I'll put some editing magic for you guys. <laughs> but uh, Fire's Eidolon. Oh, Fire's okay. Eidolon. I really like that one. It has Pandemic in it. It has a little bit of a uh, little bit of Pandemic, a little bit of uh, Forbidden Island kind of mixed in, in, into it. But it's also got retro gaming. So. Uh, that one I'll play over the pandemic. Yeah, I still remember our first time even playing after sp explaining the rules. Like, we lost. Oh, well, let's pick it up again. Let's do it again. Oh, my God. I played this one lost. a lot, too. Uh, we lost the third time. And then I was like, screw it. Let's put some more action cards in there to make the deck a little longer. And we actually finally beat it. If somebody yeah. asked me to play this game, I'd still probably play it, which is why it's, it's still in my collection. It's still sitting there waiting for mm -hmm. somebody to ask me. But it's a, definitely my short list because I haven't touched it in, like, I'd say seven months. Yeah. If I'm being maybe generous. Mm -hmm. All right. You ready? Yep. Number three. Oh, or two. two. Oh, three. Two. Three, two. I have two. Oh, I, I got one. You get to decide. One. Oh, I get to decide. Ah, I'm going to go first. Okay. All right. So this next. We wipe our brows. Yeah. Yeah, it is quite. Yeah. It's getting it's warmer. Get, it's getting warmer. It's, it's, maybe, it's, maybe it's just me. It's an afternoon, so it's always the warmest in the afternoon. And humid. <sighs> Yeah, so it was okay. We have we have Grant burning with us, so he's he's hiding in the background, burning with us, watching the camera. Yeah, I don't know. It's like when it's humid, it's like your body, my body's like, make yourself a waterfall. <laughs> it's, it's okay. We're losing weight. We're losing weight. Okay. Anyway, this next game is a game I want to play. Yeah, you yeah, want to play this. this? I think it's still great, but the uh, time stories. I think it kind of it kind of like, like jumped to like, my top ten. I'm waiting for when you're 10. done with this, so I can trade you for it. I really want to play it. My wife wants to play. You can it. borrow it. I don't think I'll trade it because I I. This game actually has a lot of good memories with me with my friends playing this, and we like we role play a lot with this one. So, if, uh, Time Stories is a game where you're it's set in the future where your agents are going back in time or to an alternative timeline trying to fix something to solve a enigma or some sort of mystery, so you can set the timeline uh, right. So you get a a, a scenario in here, and the first one is about an asylum, and then there's many scenarios. How many expansions of, do you have? There's, I think there's eight. And you have how many? Eight. So you have all of them? Yes. I haven't played all of them yet. Okay. Yeah. Fancy. There's all the stuff in here right mm -hmm. now? All yeah. the expansions? So what, what the game the game is like, it has the base game and it's like the store is a little module. So all you get are a deck of cards. You get all the pieces already in here. As some person described it, it's like a VCR. <laughs> so there's the story in there, but you can't really, you know, it's like watching a movie. You Once you solve it, it's you don't really Done. need to play it. yeah you don't you need to play, really it play it again and, and, and the experience is in there and i think there's some really cool concepts the one of the things that kind of like made me push away from it now is like some of the i mean it's just so there's a lot more expansions in there it's becoming a little bit more redundant it's also the it's not as surprising as that very first scenario we got because it was creepy it was you know don't tell me yeah. don't spoilers no no one no, told the explorers but it was, just, it was just creepy and just some things that you, you you can discover it's all a game, it's a game about discovery yeah yeah and uh if if you want a good maybe analogy is like a computer point and click adventure yeah in there with 
like, like a, a, yeah. a writing a, a writing clicking game where you can mm-hmm. go, oh yeah you're in trying the to dungeon you know, and... oh here's the thing and you're trying to, and so like in in the in the game you're trying as you're solving the mystery you're unfolding everything the thing is you don't have enough time because everywhere you, what, what everything you do every, uh, places that you go you'll eat up time yeah. and then you're trying to solve you know maybe you maybe you want to pick up some information this you know this time and here's like you know now you have to go here you found a secret entrance that when you go back in time and you have to reset it because after you run out of time you have to reset everything and then try to do it again some stuff are maybe irrelevant some stuff you just wanted to go for one straight one over there so you, you and then don't bother with anything else so yeah i think it's it, i think it's people cool, have but... been telling me how amazing this game is for mm-hmm. years now and i've yet to bring it out i think it's how it was like two three years Hey, I think so, yeah. About two, three, maybe four years, I think. But yeah, it's. I think it's still a cool game. I. This is something, I want to keep. Will you ever play? To, the, will you ever play the expansion? So will you play another expansion? Yes, I will. I, well, I want to complete it. We have two more expansions to go through. Even though it's not fallen a little bit from. Yeah, the... it has fallen a lot. I would say. I, I don't. I don't. I would say it used to be in my top ten. Now it's probably down somewhere in like top fifty. No, sorry, top hundred. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. But Fun it, 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 yeah, because I, I just still remember the the stories that we got and the, just the role playing that we had, and still a lot of fun. A lot of nostalgia. And and I just want to and I do want to keep it just to you know let someone else borrow it. Yeah. Because I I did I did like it that way. You don't have to play everything. You don't. So just play one if yeah. you need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Let me go ahead and dig in here. Here it is. Here it is. This one here. People are gonna probably crucify me. I would imagine. I don't know if you would agree now that you've seen it. Ah, this is called Ticket to Ride by Alan R. Moon. And Ticket to Ride is, as most people know, a very, very popular train game. Has a little bit of rummy associated with it in which you're trying to collect train cards and then attach them together to form routes. Those routes are going to go across the United States and you'll have certain objectives in your hand secret that you'll need to gather your trains to move across the board. Maybe you want to be from California all the way to San Francisco or California all the way to Florida coast. And you're going to score points into the game based on if you successfully accomplish those goals. If not, you'll lose points. You try to gather as many points, as many objective cards as you possibly can by the end of the game to score as many route po- possibly points as you can. Uh, there's a little bit of drafting, in which you can kind of mess your opponents over. And there's also a little bit of choosing where you want to go that's going to best suit yourself or negatively suit your opponent. So Ticket to Ride has a lot to offer in a gateway game. This is a game that I've played a lot. And I mean a lot, a lot. Yeah. We well, play, I played this game, I guess, say 50 plus times. That's how much <laughs> I played this when I first got it. Uh, and it's so easy to teach, so actually, easy we, to we explain. We also play on the iPad if we're going on the road. Yeah. 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 It's, and it's it's a lot faster. And, you know, the thing is, um, I like it. I like the la- the app a lot. But yeah. I also like the board game still. But the last time I played this game has been even longer than almost all the rest of these games now. It's mm-hmm. probably been two years, two and a half years. And it's just because there's other games that satisfy, maybe not all of these conditions, you know, but I don't care about trains. Like, I'm not a fan of train games all per se. There are certain train games I'm interested in, like Faith Steampunk or something like that. But as far as just like trains going places, it does, doesn't really fulfill me. And so it has to come, it comes down to the rummy element and then the drafting element. And I think there's a lot of games that, in my opinion, do a little bit better of a job as it can give me a different type of theme, as well as the fact that I've also played the game so much that now I just don't have an interest. If somebody asked me to play, I'd probably say yes to playing the newer ones I haven't tried before, like Europe and Seas or whatever all the new yeah. ones are. I've only ever played Ticket to Ride, the base oh, game. Oh, you only play the Ticket to Ride, the base game? That's oh, no. I Oh no! It's the only one I own. No, you got you gotta try some of the other That's ones. Also, I'd still try the other ones yeah. to see if I would maybe get yeah. myself what's, back into it. But I don't want to play this one anymore. I would. I do recommend some of the like I think the ones like UK, because that in Pennsylvania because that has stocks in it. So so yeah, yeah. I mean, I've heard a lot of good things from a lot, about a lot of the games, but for some reason I just every time I want to pull this out and show people, I'm just like oh, I don't really want to play this though. So I'm gonna put it back. I, <laughs> I've I've owned the Europe one for a very long time. And I haven't found because I wanted to find this in the thrift store. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's. Have you, uh, ever ha- you own this game or no? I, I I don't own this version. I own the Europe version, mm. which has uh, uh, one or two extra rules in it. Yeah, but it's something that I would definitely play with someone wants to play it. Yep. Yeah. For, yeah. Fair yeah. enough. I, I I I totally understand that. It's just well, I'm just done. You know. So like when you play something enough, you're like, I just don't want to play anymore. Mm. World of Warcraft is the same thing for yeah. me. <laughs> Last one. No, second to last. Second to last one? Second to last. Second to last one. I don't know. It's too hot in here. I can't think. Three. One. I'm going to go again first. Okay, let me find that. Now i got to 
figure it out where it's hiding down here somewhere. So we did Ticket to Ride and Machi Koro for my other games. I'm supposed to have all of them down here. Oh, here's, here's King of Tokyo. There's only four of them. Well, I got four here. What's your other one? One, two, three, four. I have five. Maybe I maybe I hit it. Anyway, let's go ahead and pull this one out anyway. I need my top four. <laughs> Munchkin. This is the Ninja Turtle edition. I got this from IDW not too long ago. And I still haven't opened it, if I'm being completely honest. This game is probably the the, the game I played the most of throughout um, my, my, my gateway games. We probably played, I can easily say a hundred times or more, at least. Uh, the different types of munchkins I owned and own probably about eight or nine different types of munchkins uh, as well as the cook's one and it's interesting so I'll still pull it out and play it whenever I get a new one just to try it to see the differences some of them provide unique things like this one has the turtles in it and it can go up the board and there's certain turtle cards that are specific to this game and how it functions but for me I don't have as much of an interest anymore I I've been burnt out and the only thing that re really revives me for this game anymore is when they do something unique. Like with the cooks, how you can actually get meeple tokens and utilize them for the cards, providing some kind of economy in the game. Uh, but otherwise, I just don't like it as much as I used to. I'm just over it. However, it does see play even more than the other ones. It's just, I, I, it has a lot to do with uh, the I, I keep because of how nostalgic it is for me, I keep wanting to see if I'm going to want to yeah. play it. And I just, the experience is just always like, Eh, not not really for me but this one here is super cool and i mean this one i haven't even i haven't played i like pulled it out i was watching my friends play it and it's got a really cool ninja turtle board where you place all the cards your level ups as well as you got all the kit turtles with their standees they're nice and big and beautiful uh, if you're a munchkin fan this is probably gonna be the one that you want to pick up especially if you like turtles but i just i just it doesn't do it for me anymore i don't like a lot of the randomness to it and i can't stand the fact that when you're not level nine players are typically going to mess you over so you do not win and somebody else wins instead mm -hmm. so it pushes you away from wanting to win the game early yeah um well this couldn't be on my list because i really hate the game yeah <laughs> fair enough yeah so yeah i just never liked it. i mean playing it I think even back in high school, that's like, oh, maybe 20 years ago or something. <laughs> yep, and I just never liked it. It's like, and like even played to like level five too. It's like, that's like halfway through the game. It's, it's just like, too long. It's like, no, when we play with eight people and it's like, oh, you do this. You just, you know, you flip a card, you do what it says. You're like, you do take that. Like, this is, this is super early. This is before we became board gamers too. And it's like, I don't know what to do. Uh, you. <laughs> And I, I do I have to pick someone? I don't care. You know, I just want to win the game, you know, one straightforward way. But yeah, I just never liked it. Any Munchkin, in fact. Fair enough. Yeah. All right, here's my um, second game. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Magikoro. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is, I got this day one. Loved it. Loved yeah. it so much. It was great. It was like, I, it reminded me of craps. You know, you, you, but you get to make your own kind of like board yeah. and stuff. And, you know, it's like, then I just, you know, as you play it and you became, you know, you're trying to meta the game, I guess you, you I would say. It's yeah, like, you're you, know, trying to, you can try and mold your own luck. You, you can't. <laughs> it, mm. It's like, you know, I guess uh, I really like the base game. It was like very Dominion style. And I really like that. And then unfortunately, when they came out with the new expansions with it, they have like a rotating market. Yeah. And that really killed it for me. Mm. Because it's a lot more, there's a lot luck, you know. In, a lot more in, in luck for Yeah, yeah in, in it. Because like, you know, oh, now you can have the flower shop. And like, I want flower shops because I've been buying other stuff. And, and it's kind of funny how each of the expansions kind of like fixes the something that was not right with the previous base game and the next expansion try to fix whatever you know wrong well, with the last the game expansion it's like, like no this is not for me i hate i i don't I, I hate it now i just hate it it used to be what I, about space I, space it's fine yeah. i like it a lot okay but i hate this game now really yeah i don't like it i, so I you despise won't it. it i won't play it i won't play it but i am kind of curious about Machi Core Legacy that's going to be coming out very soon. 
Aha! Uh-huh. Yeah. The curiosity comes with yeah. the legacy game. So, yeah, so it's, uh, I'm interested to see what. I, do. I did love the concepts in it and how, you know, it's like willing. Was well, this in your top 10 at some point? I won't say top 10, but maybe top 20. And now you yeah. hate it. Yeah, I hate it. Wow. I don't even, I don't even recognize it as a game anymore. I guess it's, it's you, too luck driven. Yeah, because you just have, all you have to do is just buy something on your turn. That's it, and you'll be fine. You buy something on your turn, you're fine. You know, can't get a stat strategy in there. But it's 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 not a good game. I, I think because it's just too too much luck. Yeah. In it. I can I can see how I mean you are not alone yeah. in that opinion. Yeah. And I wish they kept it like a Dominion style where you can switch and match, and I think that would be a better game because you can kind of combo and kind of like mitigate the lucks in there. That's that's how I feel about it now. Beautiful. Yeah. One more, right? Actually, I do know where my I do know my last one, and I I think I hit it somewhere. But we'll see if I roll a two. All right, who's going? You first. You. All right, yeah. I'm gonna look. It's it's gotta be in here. Maybe I'm gonna dig delve deep. Maybe it's on the left hand side there. No, it's not. See, it's so funny because I know. All right, here we go. Here we go. What am going on? Where are you? Hello. That's okay. All right, I'm gonna use editing. Oh, is it that? <laughs> no. Nope. No. I'm going to use editing magic, I think. Okay. okay, here it is. Gloomhaven! No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. It's not falling from grace just yet. Uh, Talisman. Talisman would be my number one. Yes. Uh, it would be a close call between maybe that one and the, the previous one. Well, not really. Talisman is a game I probably don't really ever want to play again. It's also a very old game, isn't it? It is. Um, it's got some cool elements to it, but it's got a lot of problems that I think are almost irredeemable. It gets too clunky at the end of the game. It's too luck-driven at the beginning of the game. You never know what you're going to get with the cards drawn, which is just too random in a lot of elements. Sometimes you're going to get something good. Sometimes you're going to get something really terrible. Sometimes it's like something you want, but you can't accomplish, or something you do want and you can't accomplish, which is just one of the, like, 10 different things you can get, you know, when I want every card to be useful. I don't want it to always win, but I don't know. It just bothers me. And then getting to the very end of the game and then you lose or have to go all the way back or like suffer some huge penalty drives me nuts. They've remade it a bunch of times. And like you, I'm also curious to see what they do with the king, you, the, the OP, you say, I want to see the, the op. The op, that's yeah. right. I want to see what they do with the Kingdom Hearts version because I'm a big Kingdom Hearts fan, so I will mm-hmm. probably play that one at least once or I'm twice. I'm interested. I'm a big Final Fantasy fan, but I don't care about Kingdom Hearts. But it just it just seems it interesting. It has some. Yeah. It'll have some Final Fantasy characters in it at least, right? Not the ones I like. Ah uh, well. Uh, so I'm <laughs> curious to see. I'm not overly hopeful because I'm nervous that it's going to be just a remake completely with mm-hmm. just a new skin. I, be- I believe there are going to do some, some stuff different in there. Just fix the problems yeah. with the game. I, I know that the other IP they're in- implementing in Talisman is Batman. Yes, well. they are. And they, they are. are doing something. I believe but I'm they just, are. I'm just so... I've been different. so over that game. It's so long, too. It's so mm-hmm. long for a roll and move. It's got old mechanics, and I think that's a big problem with it. It's hard to fix a game with <laughs> old mechanics. You have to really go about mechanically changing the game, and I don't know if it's possible with that one. I've heard that you can add all the expansions to it. My buddy, uh, <laughs> uh, my buddy Jen tells me that you can add all the expansions to the game, and it makes it a lot better, but... I don't want to buy the expansions to a game I don't really like anymore. I will try to play the Kingdom Hearts one, and I might, I might pick it up to switch copies with the one I currently have. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but Talisman is my most fallen from grace game. Okay, Talisman. Well, I had I never played Talisman. I guess that's a good thing though. I mean, you know, it's a classic. <laughs> okay, so this next game was number one on my list. I and it kept it. dropping and dropping and dropping and now it's probably like not even I would I wouldn't even classify it in a ranking of any of my game rankings now. Really? Yes. That is uh, Sentinels! Elder Multiverse. Oh my gosh. Really yeah. hide behind this thing. I used to yeah, I used to love this game. I used to love it. I used to adore. I used to advocate for it. But now it's just something in the past that, you know, I played with a lot. Of it's a stuff. ghost of yeah. its former self. Yeah, and it's just too much. It's just ultra fiddly, and there's really no strategy. It's all about, you know, just best tactics as you can go, and hopefully you might survive and kill the bad guy, the evil villain in the game. 
This is a cooperative game, right? It is a cooperative game. It is a game about superheroes. They're kind of like... I would well, say, I've played a lot of games that are similar to this that have drawn yeah. from this game, but never this game itself. Yeah, but it's... Uh, there's a lot... The game... It's a cooperative game that has... Uh, that takes inspiration. I would say knockoffs from from DC, Marvel, and a lot of other comics in there. Like, you got Captain Le uh, like Legacy, who was like, kind of like Superman, the Wraith, who was like the female version of Batman. And sort of that, and I think the stories are really cool. Uh, there's also their spin-off game with their tactics, Central Tactics, which I think is still pretty cool, which they never took off of it. But uh, one of the things that gets it for me is just you know when you get that new expansion, it's like you know you kind of just play, you can explore with it, and then you know that's kind of that's it. Also, so playing with some uh, my uh, with other people, uh, even some of my uh, good good gaming friends, like you know they, it's like their game. For, for them yeah. and it's like you know they play it they play they want to play it they try they force me the way they want to play it as well and so it's just a total turn off for me and every time I see this game I just don't want to play it because it's it's a game that you know I, I used to love and um, now I don't have any more control about it, about it anymore and then you know it's like I, I just don't want to play it because it just gives me bad memories and the game is also very slow mm. as well it's a very slow burn or it's like totally unfair and quick which I probably, that's the way I probably want to go out with it. This is yeah. faster. And I, I, I mean, I, the, the things I liked about it before is like there's so many, there's so much, array, if, if, let's open, oh, this is a huge box and this is the collector's box. This is like the very last thing. Those just open like this, lost. that's yeah. it. And so, and then there's like tons of characters. Like here's the character, the villains in here and then you got your characters right down over here, like uh, over here. And there's so many characters and so much repellability. It's just, I love replayability in games, but I don't, see that anymore in this game that you know it doesn't make me excited about it anymore so and there you go so this game is going to be out of my collection as soon as possible <laughs> after Sano this video multiverse yeah want to buy it it's available in the <laughs> description below <laughs> so those were our top five games of games we used to like and probably reasons why they fell from grace. Mm -hmm. What games did you come up with? Did you put them in the comments? If not, go ahead and tell us now. Do you agree with our picks or do you completely disagree and why? Let us know. It's all opinion based, but uh, I don't know. A lot of my games I feel are gateway games, which kind of sucks because you would like to. I like to keep the old classics. I think I enjoy them, but I just got, get bored of them. I guess. Yeah. Over and my time. games are probably an enthusiast level, except for maybe. Um, actually no they, and these they, are very I think a lot of these come from like your heart too like the, yeah. the, the, like the, oh, I really like this because of this reason and yeah, that reason it's, it's funny because you know I talk about time stories too like that's still close to my heart but I still like it as a game you yeah. know it's there it's something I still want to keep by this I just like I don't want I don't want it I don't want to see it anymore <laughs> fair enough yeah. but also like the negative memories involved with gaming groups and all that can mm -hmm. really place a huge effect on whether you're going to like a game or not too. It can be the best game ever, but if you're playing with three people who you don't want to play with for various reasons, it can really turn you off as to why you want to play a specific game. But anyway, thank you guys for watching and bearing with us as we burned in this molten <laughs> hot sauna. I think we did a pretty good job of keeping it together. Yeah. I only like basically forgot my number one pick, but otherwise, I was oh. like, actually I even have that game. It's just somewhere. It's like hidden around here. I know I brought it. You did bring I don't I, I don't know if you bring it. You bought it here. I, I, don't I know. just don't know. That's okay. But nevertheless, thank you guys so much for watching. Another top five video. Stay tuned for our next top five video. Top five, I have no idea what the title is because we haven't decided yet. <laughs> look Games, in the description, right? <laughs> look, look in the description because we'll figure it out after this video. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, Ferdinand will take us out and let us uh, go ahead and tell us a little bit about his channel, what you can do, where you can subscribe, and all that good stuff. Yeah, so I'm Ferdinand the Carbert Stacker. You can check me out at the www.thecarbertstacker.com or so the YouTube channel, The Carbert Stacker, where we have reviews and tutorials and all that wonderful jazz and board gaming. So check it out. Cardboardstacker.com, mm -hmm. as well as YouTube Cardboard Stacker, and yeah. a Facebook group as well. Yeah. There's a lot of great tutorial videos. Yeah, Facebook, the Carpet Stacker, and uh, Instagram, and Twitter, CB Stacker. So. And if you're here and you haven't subscribed or liked, now is your opportunity. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. We, we're burning, subscribe. we are burning in the sauna just for you. Burning to give you our entertainment value. Wow, there's literally sweat dripping down this chair. I think I think the sweat. No, the sweat's actually not from the heat. It's actually, you know how much we used to like it. That, we, yeah, we used to love the game so much, know? but now all the love is pouring out of our our, our uh, pores here. So, oh well. Sorry, Sentinels. I, I I do. I'm gonna probably miss Ticket to Ride the most. I think of all of them mm -hmm. because I really love that game. Um, even though Munchkin, I played 
a lot more. And then Talisman, it was just like, what, like a, a top 50 game, and now it's like <sighs> negative yeah. something? I don't know. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we look forward to seeing, seeing you guys next, next time. time.